I'm sure most of you guys have heard me talking about all the fantastic benefits of using psychedelics. For example, the positive effects are not limited to, spiritual awakenings, you know, godlike religious type experiences, the ability to quit other addictive harmful drugs like cigarettes and alcohol, or just having an overall sense of peace in your everyday life that you didn't have. But what you don't hear me commonly speak about is some of the potential that psychedelics have to cause destructive, life-shattering experiences. I know a lot of you guys are afraid of bad trips. I know there's a lot of people watching who have been scared off of psychedelics because they've had one extremely frightening event that just shook them up so hard that their life maybe was never the same. Maybe they feel more anxiety in their everyday life. Maybe it increased their amount of paranoia. Maybe they're struggling right now. Maybe you're struggling right now with how to overcome a bad trip because you want to say revisit psychedelics because you think there's more to learn there. Well, what I'm gonna do with this video is try to help you guys out. First of all, bad trips are very easy to prevent. This is why I have videos like my how-to series. I cover everything from LSD, mushrooms, DMT, even MDMA. I explain to you guys how to use them safely to pretty much avoid bad trips. Having a trip sitter is pretty much the number one thing. Being in a good set and setting is also, well, probably more important than a trip sitter. So there's a lot of things that I've already talked about in order to avoid bad trips. So I do need to include that here. I also need to let you guys know that bad trips are extremely uncommon. It's more likely that you are going to have a positive experience or at the very least, it's more likely that, well, not every trip is 100% positive. Sometimes there's dark and light aspects to every experience, but it's more likely that you're going to find more lights, you're going to find more positivity in your experience than negativity. I wanted to point that out because I don't want this video to scare anyone away from using psychedelics. I want to display psychedelics in the most accurate light possible, and in order to do that, I have to touch on both the positive aspects of them and the negative aspects of them. Because if we're being realistic, there have been cases of people doing, say, mushrooms or LSD, and afterwards, their life has been much, much worse than before they took it. Fortunately for you guys watching, I'm the kind of psychonaut who likes to experience every aspect of psychedelics. So I have my fair share of terrifying trips. I had one trip that was so scary that I didn't take a psychedelic again for a solid year. I've been to hell and back again so I can share with you guys my tale and hopefully help some of you guys out recovering or avoiding these experiences from happening to you. When I experienced my trip, which I've made a video about called Suicidal Shroom Trip, that was actually my first really terrifying trip. Now, I had had scary trips before. I've faced my own death on DMT before, but that was the very first time that I felt genuinely suicidal from a psychedelic. That trip actually caused a massive snowball effect, wherein every experience I had after that one progressively got worse and worse. And it got to the point where, because of the one bad trip, I programmed my mind to be more paranoid and more scared. So then every trip I had after that, I was worried and I was anxious and I was thinking, well, what if that happens again? And because my thoughts were going to that direction, of course you get what you're afraid of, and all of my trips preceding that started to get really dark, terrifying, and scary. Sometimes we have a difficult time admitting to ourselves what we are truly deeply afraid of. And psychedelics, specifically ones like psilocybin mushrooms, are experts at showing us our deepest, darkest fears and making us face them without anywhere to turn to. They showed me that I've always been a coward. Sure, I can see the silver lining in situations, but that doesn't mean that I don't first try to run from problems instead of facing them. I used to use things like cigarettes and alcohol to help me run from my problems. I used to try to mask my sadness by, you know, experiencing artificial highs. I'm very thankful that I chose to face the fear, but facing my fears took more than just, you know, facing my fear of a bad trip and tripping again. I had to really get underneath the surface and really dig deep down and find... Well, first I had to find what it was that the psychedelics were showing me that I was running from. And I mean, it sounds stupid, like it should be so easy. We should know what we're afraid of. But sometimes we are so good at lying to ourselves, we don't even know ourselves what it is that we've been running from. The recipe for healing from one of these traumatic trips is actually time and understanding. You need an adequate amount of time to gain a greater understanding. Eventually I came to terms with what my fears were. I was afraid of losing my mind on psychedelics. I was afraid I was going to have a trip and I would never come back. And I was afraid that I just, you know, lose my mind in everyday life. I've always had this underlying fear of schizophrenia. Even before trying psychedelics, I had this fear of just, 
yeah, that was my biggest fear was losing my mind. So you'd think like, yeah, why, why would I use psychedelics when that's literally what my fear is? It's almost like I was subconsciously trying to make me face my own fear head on from the get-go. Another fear I had was that I was going to trip and end up killing myself. Another fear I had was that I was going to be alone. This is a fear that I've had my entire life since being very young. I was afraid that I was never going to meet, uh, say, a partner that I got along with. I was never going to find love. I was going to spend my life alone and miserable. I was deathly afraid that there was eternal nothingness after this life ended. I was afraid that, you know, all of my, oh, maybe there's another realm to go to, wishful thinking was really just that. It was wishful thinking, and really, this life is all you get. I was afraid that, yeah. After finally accepting what all of my fears were, I then proceeded to safely have a trip. But I made sure that I followed every precaution possible. I was sure to have benzos handy in, in case I needed to escape my mind. I was sure that I was in the most comfortable setting possible. I was sure that I had a trip sitter. I was sure that my dosage was adequate and not too powerful. And then I went into the experience with the intent to lose my mind. I went into the experience with the intent to face potential suicidal thoughts and to see how I would deal with them. And it wasn't easy. It wasn't like I just made it out of that trip alive and then I was like, yay, now I'm healed. It was more like I made it out of that trip alive with an even bigger laundry list of things I needed to fix. It helped me get even more deep into what the core issues were. It helped me get to the very root of my problems. The reason I was afraid of going insane was because I didn't trust my own mind. And the reason that I was afraid I would say, kill myself on psychedelics was because I lacked discipline. I didn't spend enough time following through with what I told myself I should be doing. I spent way too much time procrastinating. I had too much negative self-talk. I'd say things like, okay, tonight you're gonna work out. And then I would skip my workout. And what we don't realize is when we spend, say a lifetime constantly making promises to ourselves and then disobeying those promises and you know, always coming up with excuses to take the comfortable route and talking ourselves out of doing what we know is going to make us feel satisfied and bring us happiness, even if temporarily it's gonna make us uncomfortable. When you spend your whole life just lying to yourself, no shit you're not gonna trust your thoughts. No shit you're gonna have a psychedelic experience where you're gonna be afraid that you're gonna do something that you regret because you don't even trust your mind when you're sober. So how are you going to trust your mind when you've lost it? Psychedelics just won't have it. They are going to take your lies and they're going to show you them and they're gonna make you see how much of a fucking asshole you've been to yourself. And they're gonna make you try to spin that around and learn and grow and become a better person through it. What I was lacking in was discipline, which I think a lot of people, especially in the Western world, lack. And a lot of people don't have such a tough love type of teacher like psilocybin mushrooms to really show them where they're going wrong in life. And for that, I I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I stumbled onto psychedelics. And through these experiences, I have healed a lot of my sadness in life. I've healed and I've overcome a lot of fears. I'm not saying that I'm perfect now. None of us are perfect. We all have quirky things and we all have fears. It's more so just reaching a point where you are comfortable and confident and a point where you can just accept yourself for who you are and you're not spending so much time comparing yourself to others and always trying to reach this ideal that that is just impossible. I had the problem of being a perfectionist. I never thought that what I did was good enough. And even to this day, I still suffer from this sometimes. I make videos and it's very rare that I look at a video and I'm like, I am so happy with how that video turned out. No, I always think I can improve, which in a sense is is good. It's good to constantly be learning and constantly improving, but it becomes negative and more destructive when you start only focusing on the bad parts and you don't realize the good. Now, some people have terrifying bad trips from psychedelics, like say the ones that I've had, but instead of using those experiences to catapult them you know, head on to face their problems, what they do is they start running from their problems more 
and they start having a very negative experience in life because of that. I guess what I really want to say with this video is that I'm proof that you can be extremely challenged to the point of a suicidal trip and you can use those bad trips to heal. You can use those bad trips to learn and to grow from. I often say that the bad trips, although at the time are can be shattering to your psyche, but those are the ones that you're going to learn the most and that you're going to benefit the most from in the long run as long as you take the time to integrate the experience and as long as you accept that there might just be some aspects of yourself that are ugly and need to change. Anyway, that concludes this video. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel for weekly psychedelic related content. Till next time, take care everyone, be safe, always test your substances. And yeah, I will see you guys soon. Sayonara. A huge shout out to everyone who's supporting us on Patreon right now. If you would like to learn more about Patreon, you can follow the link and you can learn more there. Till next time, stay safe everyone, and don't do anything that I would not do. Take care guys.